Dividing polynomials with long division. So we're going to talk about how we can divide these two polynomials using long division. Before we do that, I just want to preface it by you know, drawing a parallel to something we already know how to do. So say we're asked to divide 1,170 by 70. Okay. What we end up doing is we draw our 7 in a little bracket with a number on in the inside. We then start and say, okay, how many times does 7 go into 1? It doesn't, so we go to the next spot. How many times does 7 go into 11? Draw the 1. 1 times 7 is 7. And then we subtract, dropping down the next term, 47. Continue from there. How many times does 7 go into 47? The 6. 6 times 7 is 42. Subtract again, leaving us 50. Rinse and repeat. We need 7. So this is then 49, and we are left with a remainder of 1. Okay, so we know how to divide numbers. Okay, Dividing polynomials is exactly the same idea, just with a little bit more x's and variables and terms involved. So what we're going to end up doing is exactly the same thing as this. Okay, So our x plus 1 goes on the outside, and then our, remember this is called the dividend, our dividend goes inside the bracket. I have a big bracket, 3x cubed, and I think I forgot a square in my problem. Let's throw that in there. 3x squared minus, sorry, 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay, so we basically are rewriting our problem as a fraction in long division. And the logic is exactly the same as we did right here, okay? You say the first thing you want to get rid of is the 3x squared. And we look at our leading term on our divisor, the term in the bottom. Okay? In order to get 3x squared from x, we need to multiply it, sorry, 3x cubed from x, we need to multiply it by 3x squared. So I always try to line up my powers. So I'm going to put 3x squared right there. So I have all my squares in a column right here. Okay? Done like what we did over here. We multiplied the number on top by the number out in front. The only difference now is we have some variables. The same idea holds. Okay, so 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. Okay, just like we did over here with our numbers, we need to subtract. Okay, so subtraction 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, those cancel, which is what we wanted. And the negative 4x squared minus 3x, make sure you distribute that negative sign, becomes negative 7x squared. That's the next term we want to get rid of, is negative 7x squared. If you want to bring this down, you can. You don't have to. Just remember that we need to include it next step when we subtract. Okay, so we need to get rid of the negative 7x squared with our leading term of an x. So we need to multiply our x by negative 7x in order to cancel it out. Negative 7x, and then we just want to multiply and subtract once again. So negative 7x times x, negative 7x squared, negative 7x times 1 is negative 7x. Once again, we want to subtract, making sure we distribute that negative sign through. Negative 7x squared minus negative 7x squared, those cancel, which is what we wanted. And then we still have this 2 up here. So it's 2x minus negative 7x, 2x plus 7x, which turns into 9x. And again, we can bring this 1 down if we want. We don't need to, just remember it's there. So this 9x is the last thing we need to get rid of. In order to get 9x from an x, we need a 9 plus 9. That 9 gets distributed through 9x plus 9, and once again we subtract. Okay, 9x minus 9x, those cancel. Negative 1 minus 9 plus a negative 9, so this is going to give us negative 10, which is a remainder. Nothing we multiply x by will give us negative 10. Okay, so there's different ways you can write this up. I'm going to take a second and come back over here and show us what this actually means. So, 
This was our process for numbers. Same exact process over there. But what we just really found out was that this statement is actually equal to our quotient. What comes up is the number that is above the sign. So if we come back over here, it's just a number up here. So that is 3x squared minus 7x plus 9. And then plus a remainder over a divisor. So this is then going to be plus negative 10 over our divisor here, x plus 1. Okay. So long division, it's a little bit more involved in dealing with numbers, but the process is exactly the same.